Hola amigo, we're now inside the Cangrejos Locos to talk to Manny Torrejon who has been in the restaurant business for many, many years. Like most restaurants in the Philippines nowadays, they've been terribly hit by the COVID pandemic. We'd like to hear from him how his restaurants and maybe his friends' restaurants are surviving this crisis. Manny, hola amigo. Hola. So, the pandemic, which hit us um, in March, was really a uh, something that we were not expecting. So, it caught all the restaurants, hotels, resorts uh, flat-footed. So, we were in a panic mode at first. What are we going to do with these restaurants? I mean, how will we continue the business? However, as they always say, you get over it. So during the dark days in April, May, we were trying to figure out how to, you know, keep the business afloat. So we were thinking a lot about deliveries, takeouts, you know, um, uh, catering, outside catering, because it's so hard to operate a dining restaurant at this stage. So we were also thinking about doing al fresco, which is. Uh, the trend now for most restaurants because people are more comfortable when they sit outside, you know, not a dine-in uh, feeling. So I think during those days we were really uh, thinking of how to get the restaurant through this hump. So we would really brainstorm, you know, uh, at that time uh, there was total closure, not until uh, we went to uh, GCQ and uh, we were allowed to open with a minimal uh, number of people in the store. So uh, we've kept afloat because of the delivery, takeout, and some catering businesses. We've tried uh, lunch boxes. You know, uh, we have this uh, comida, ca caja de comida, which is a lunch box, a Spanish lunch box for $4.99. So you have to be very creative at this point to keep your business alive. What's more, uh, what's more challenging is that a lot of uh, businesses now, food businesses, are home-based. So you're competing with people who have no overhead. Yes. They, they're only on their own. They're, their family is the one doing everything. So they don't have salaries, they don't have rent. The most is they have gas expenses, electricity. But then we, as a brick and mortar thing, we have to keep on alive. We have to pay our uh, our rents. We have to pay our salaries. So it's hard. It's challenging. But I think we can get over this. For our uh, own situation, they had to wait a couple of months. Nice. Not everything. And then uh, we're working on like a percentage rent as well. So they've been very cooperative. And, you know, we're thankful for them. I've heard of some landlords who are not as... Cooperative. cooperative, not uh, they don't feel the the, the, need, the, to the help. need to help their uh, well, you know, uh, as in anything in this life, you have to give to get something back, right? So I think this is the time that they should give because they've been getting ever since before, right? I think this is the time that they have to help their tenants survive, or else there there'll be nobody renting their places let, later on. Ergo, no income. No income. So, think about the future. Think about long term, right? I mean, for these landlords, they have to think long term. Because if not, there's no tenants to talk about in the future. To many, many, many businesses thought that 2020 was a banner year. Exactly. No, but like you said, nobody predicted it. Nobody predicted Even my it. Feng Shui master said it was going to be a good year <laughs> for me. <laughs> Well, the virus doesn't know any stage in life, you know, it just hits you like that, right? I mean, at the least time you expect it. You know, we were expecting, actually, you said banner year. We were going to open a couple of branches this year. And as a matter of fact, you know, we already had, uh, like, the contracts written up. But good enough, you know, when we were about to sign them, then this thing happened. Or else we'll be caught with, uh, you know, with rent again. And uh, those people who just opened, well, you just opened January, this thing. So, uh, you know, we were expecting really to make a big splash this year. I've, I've read somewhere that the COVID drug 
uh, would be available sometime in April 2021. Yes. And by the time it hits the market, it's going to be May. By the time it uh, saturates the whole Philippines, it will be another six months into See, 2021. Yeah. Um, first, on that question, I think it still will be touch and go, your April thing. Second of all, not a lot of people would let themselves be, you know, uh, like guinea pigs on this vaccine. So a lot of people will be apprehensive. So I, I'm not seeing, you know, like everybody jumping to get the vaccine. So we're looking at, I'm looking at 2021 as still a, uh, still a challenging year. It will not be as easy as we think it will be. Everybody's hoping to get by middle of next year. But ako, I've been looking at 2021 as a year that will still be challenging, will still be floating. Uh, I'm giving it, uh, I'm not very optimistic about 2021. I'm optimistic about 2022. For sure, by the time we'll be back into shape. Second of all, on that question, the question is, people are not very comfortable going out. Even if we open the whole restaurant, 100%, we'll still get the same people because not a lot of people are very comfortable going out and dining. A lot of them still would like to stay home and have their food at home. So that's the challenge for us is how to convince the customers or the clients to come to the restaurant because it's safe, actually. Thank you very okay. much, Manny. It has been a, an, an enlightening uh, chat with you. We, let's just hope for the best and uh, more power to Pangrejos. Thank you. I'll pour you some wine for uh, prosperity and uh, good opportunity in the coming years. Salud to Lasal and to Animo Magazine. Thank you.